Our next guest is an Emmy-nominated writer and comedian whose work you've seen on Detroiters, Drunk History, and right here on Late Night. She's the host and star of The Amber Ruffin Show. New episodes are available every Friday night on Peacock. Please welcome back one of my favorite people, the wonderful Amber Ruffin, everybody! <laughs> So, it's weird to be in the same room with someone who's not your husband with no mask on. I know. Look at us. Weird. This is, but yeah, this is like counts as a full affair in yeah. 2020. Oh, uh, yay, finally. Now, uh, obviously, we're taking advantage of our distance here, but we have both, uh, because you're doing a show in the building and I'm doing a show in the building, we're both getting tested a lot. We should make sure in case anybody's watching and, and feels like this is a, uh, if they're feeling a little squirrely watching, they should know that we're very safe. We are tested Constantly? How often are you tested? I'm tested two or three times a week. Three times a week. I'm three times a week. Whoa. Yeah. Are you getting better at the self swab? I'm a pro at the self swab. Yeah. Because once you had your mask on all day, you got a bunch of snot going anyway. Self swab is easy. <laughs> but when that man sticks that thing in your nose, they're called a doctor. <laughs> you know the man with the white coat. Yeah. I don't know who he is. But when he sticks that thing in my nose. That's very bad. No, that guy's in the building, right? This isn't a man on the street. No, oh, yeah. He's, got, he's right outside the building. He's always like, hey, hey, come here. Go, okay. You are too gullible. You, are, you have too big a heart. You think I everybody... get a lollipop, so I'll do it. Um, oh, that was, a, what, that was the extreme? Mm -hmm. um, so, Amber, you are now, uh, on Friday, you will record the third episode of The Amber Ruffin Show. Yeah. And uh, for those who haven't seen it, uh, or I should say for those who have seen it, it looks very different than this set, but it, it is taking place right here in this studio. You guys, it's the same. Hey, hey, you guys, it's the same set. <laughs> how is it uh, uh, launching? Obviously, we're figuring out how to do a show during a pandemic. How is it launching a show during a pandemic? It's perfectly fine. Look, Jenny, our head writer, and my little best friend and I talk nonstop. Now, the only way that that could possibly have been solved is if we work over Zoom. Right. I don't know how we would do this show if we didn't work over Zoom, because you have to say goodbye so that you can use this same computer to write your sketches. Uh, otherwise, we would still be on that first call. We'd love to talk. <laughs> and we do set aside an hour because we know we're going to be like, oh, my God, do you remember that guy with the red hair? Yes, I remember that guy. And then that's a whole hour gone. Now, uh, one of the things that people might not know about our writer's room is that it's all of our writers at late night share a room. Yes. And so, you know, and one of the nice things is, of course, uh, the fact that when 15 people share a room, there's always uh, good gossip. Uh, do you miss that about uh, the writers being uh, distant right now? Yes. Who knows what's going on with these people? Right. We don't have enough time together. We, you know, I, I miss people showing up and wearing something they don't normally wear yeah. and then getting made fun of so terribly yeah. that they want to go home, but they can't because they work here. Yeah, I feel as though we have a very loving, supportive environment, but if somebody dresses even a little outside, not like what we dress like, but their own, what they've established. <laughs> the tiniest bit different. Woo, buddy, you want to come to work in shorts? Go on and try it. Now, I'm not going to name names, but obviously Mike someone Scullin. showed up on Zoom in a tank top. <laughs> One of the writers showed up to Zoom in a tank top. And that was, no kidding, five minutes of yeah, bits? five minutes. Solid bits on this poor guy. And, his, and he's in his house. Yeah. He's not even with us. He should be allowed to do whatever. I should note, and I think, again, it speaks to how supportive we are, the next Zoom call, uh, Mike Carnell, another writer, also wore a tank top. <laughs> in solidarity. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when Adam you. Sandler, like, pees his own pants in that movie. <laughs> It's like, hey, don't feel bad, kid. We all piss oh, ourselves. I pissed my man. Um, you mentioned uh, uh, your, uh, I guess Jenny is, uh, is she the producer of the show, head writer of the show? Jenny is the head writer and executive producer. <gasps> and she's also a writer for Late Night, a, a writer that you introduced to us. And uh, you knew Jenny back in Second City days. Yeah. Jenny and I did Second City Denver together, which is a real thing that really happened. And no one knows about it. 
But Second City Denver existed. Yes, there's Second City Toronto. Is that true? I, there was. For yes, a while. there's Second City Las Vegas. And yes, there's Second City Chicago, but Second City Denver also existed at one point. And that's where you guys met? And did you guys click right away? Yeah. We had the best time. We all lived in this um, big building downtown. Friggin' just like the first regular paycheck of your life. And like you live in this nice apartment for free. It was horrible. We behaved terribly. <laughs> um, uh, you also have a sidekick on the show. Uh, Tarek uh, Davis! Tarek Davis, who uh, I've known for a long time. You've known longer, obviously. And uh, one of the things, certainly one of the most fun parts about putting together writing staff when I started this show was hiring people that I'd known in the past. Uh, do, are you enjoying working with Tarek? Yes, but you misspoke. You said that I knew Tarek longer than you knew Tarek, but that's not true. Because I knew Tarek first. Because we all met when we got to Boom Chicago. Tarek and I went to Boom Chicago at the same time. That time when we got there, you were there visiting for New Year's Eve. Oh, my so goodness. So the three of us met each other all on the, the same, same day. There you go. Look at that. And now here we are. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned we met uh, in Amsterdam. We, yeah. all, we both worked for a theater, Tarek as well, called Boom Chicago. You, uh, you are now married to a Dutchman named Jan. Yeah. Uh, which sounds like, you know, a stereotype, but it's also true. Yeah. Um, he how, loves cheese. <laughs> he does. <laughs> how did you and Jan uh, do through quarantine? We've been doing great, but we are like super raggedy. How so? Like, I look like this because several people stopped me and shook dirt off me <laughs> and like primped me up. But naturally, I'm a raggedy dude. Like, my husband and I both have like 14 year old boy vibes. So, like, it's us just like drinking and like ordering a lot of food and there is no adult there to like clean it up or tell us to go outside or shower it's it's pretty bad it's pretty bad yeah um now obviously it's very one of the things i think people are very excited about your show it's very rare for a black woman not just to write for a late night show but now to have her own late night show but i think the real trailblazing is I think it's probably safe to say that you're the first black woman to have a talk show who also speaks Dutch. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> say anything to our Dutch viewers real quick? <laughs> um, als jullie uh, Nederlander zijn, dan ik heb één vraag voor je. En dat is, waarom ben je uh, aan ik, uh, dit show kijken? <laughs> en hoe? That was great. Thank to you. To them, they're like, ooh. She, her Dutch is bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I guess we can't be picky. I guess we can't. We have to, uh, we have to take what we get. Um, hey, so uh, you uh, provided a great service, uh, not just to our show, but I think to our viewers. After uh, the George Floyd murder, you opened our show. We were still remote at the time uh, for a whole week, telling stories of your interactions with police. I think it was very eye-opening to people, not just that you had the one story, but that you had multiple stories. Uh, and, and you pointed out on the last day that you had more to tell. Were you surprised at how surprised people were by that? I guess so. I, I was surprised. I thought everybody knew that. But it makes sense now that I realize they did not. Um, but, you know, people ain't off the hook. Because, look, people have been saying this. And if folks didn't realize that, then what they have is an unwillingness to believe black people when they say, hey, this is crazy. So people have been saying it. Now they're getting the hang of it. There you go. You're uh, providing another service as well, which I should note is a little more on the humorous side than uh, what you shared on the George Floyd week, yeah. which is uh, you and your sister uh, who grew up uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, basically, you just wrote a series of true stories that she had written down over the years of things that happened to her. And the title of the book is? You'll never believe what happened to Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Lacey is just like very, very tiny. She's like exactly this, me, except s smaller and cuter. So people really think that she is to be messed with, but she's not. Uh, so she just writes down everything that is a crazy, hilarious, racist story. And she's done this for years and years and years. And you know, if you're a black lady at work, you have to do that for work. 
uh, on a regular basis. But not me, if you do comedy. <laughs> um, but she, um, you know, had been doing that for years. And then we decided to just put all of the funniest stories in a book. And there were enough for a whole book. Just the funny ones were enough for a book. And this is just ones that specifically <laughs> happened to Lacey. <laughs> It's just racist stories that have happened to Lacey that you would never, ever, ever believe. Um, and when will when is the book going to be out? When are the we... book comes out January the 12th. Oh. And I am 79% sure that that date is right. <laughs> Either way, people can pre-order something like that. And the date that I think we can both agree on is Friday is the airing of a new Amber Ruffin show. Uh, Amber... It is just always a delight to spend time with you. Good, Thanks for being here. Good, because I'm always here. <laughs> yeah, you are always here. It's still really nice. Uh, new episodes of The Amber Ruffin Show are available Friday nights on Peacock. We'll be right back.